Hello friends, how are you? My name is Ari Therger and today I'm going to have a quick take on occultism. If it's truly harmful and evil or something quite innocent. Child's play. <laughs> Lately in this channel uh, there's been a bit of a talk around sorcery, witchcraft, the occult and black magic in general. Which is only natural when we talk about paganism. It's part of the essence of paganism. But, of course, there is a certain stigmatization of the occult as something harmful and evil, destructive and even sinful and forbidden by a couple of religions. So, today I would like to talk a bit about this uh, in an attempt to understand the stigmatization of sorcery and why many people still to this day, and even among pagans, think sorcery and black magic should be something to avoid. I hope you enjoy this video. In ancient societies, magic was very much part of the religious life. Magic wasn't a specific concept to characterize the unexplainable or just something coming out of reality or divine intervention. Magic was the very rituals, the religious performances, the chanting, and the act of offering and sacrificing, and libations. Magic was also science, chemistry, the use of real materials and objects in religious performances and ceremonies and rites. So, to ancient civilizations, in most cases, there wasn't a clear boundary between magic and religion. And since this channel is mostly about Scandinavian studies, in archaeological contexts of pre-Christian Scandinavia, it's almost impossible to determine what was magic and what was religion, because naturally there was a great insertion of magical performances in the religious life. Necromancy was considered magic, so was chemistry science and technology when used in religious ceremonies. The Greeks were the masters in using technology in temples to create a variety of illusions and phenomenon to express the power of the divine forces. Magic didn't have a negative connotation yet. Magic in its earliest definition referred to the ceremonies and rituals performed by a priest magician. There were many terms to describe magic in classical antiquity, in the Hellenic world. Surprisingly, early Christians also used magic. Exorcism was considered magic, so was nocturnal prayers, the sign of the cross even, etc. And the Roman authorities made a clear boundary between magic and religion because Christians did not participate in the official religious acts of the empire. They did their own religious acts in hiding. So they were against the law. So right in this moment of history, magic served as the term to refer to unofficial ritualistic activities performed by people who did not want to be part of the Roman society and the Roman customs, and so Roman authorities persecuted early Christians. But Rome adopted Christianity, and the same stigmatization the Christians suffered from the Romans, they would have the exact same approach on everybody else. Christians used the term magic as a means of delineating between true and corrupt forms of faith within religions. Every religious performance that wasn't part of the official religious acts within Christianity was considered magic and therefore not true forms of faith. During the first century of the Common Era, when the first New Testament texts were being written down, a fundamental the vision between magic and religion was finally created. Within the three major Near Eastern monotheisms, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, 
magic was used. But everything outside the official religious performances of each was considered evil, sinful, forbidden. So you might imagine the conflicts between these three faiths, uh, because each other's religious performances were considered unofficial in each other's eyes. These three main religions spread and because they come from the same religious sources, there was a bit of unification against paganisms of all sorts. So pagans were heavily persecuted because everything they did within the religious sphere was magic and it was highly demonized. Things got even worse during the Reformation period in the process of defining Protestantism. Uh, there was a thorough work on identifying the magical elements of Catholicism. Catholicism. Exorcisms, miracles, etc. were seen as magical acts and therefore forbidden. So basically, every religious act, ceremony, ritual, festivity and so on was magic and it was considered evil against the church and God himself. So naturally, hundreds of thousands of tales to mark the occult as something harmful and evil were created. And we all know that throughout history, the views of the church on witchcraft itself, there is no need to explain that to you. As you can see, there is a long history of seeing the occult as something harmful and evil and highly forbidden. A stigmatization deeply rooted in our collective consciousness. So it's only natural most people fear the occult, even among pagans. However, lately, the occult has become something quite attractive for the new generations. And the three main monotheistic religions are very preoccupied. Furthermore, there is an increasing interest uh, in the old ways, in paganism itself, which might be the cause that leads people to be interested in the occult. As I've said before, in ancient pagan societies, there was no magic without religion and vice versa. So being a pagan, automatically people have to deal with the occult. But even if people aren't pagan, these past 30 years or so, many young people became interested in things such as astrology, demons, witchcraft, sorcery. I think more than ever, in a dying world, in a world where we have depleted almost every natural resource and man's action upon nature has greatly destroyed everything around us, these young generations are afraid because the future is uncertain. Uh, there is no hope of living that long in a decaying world. So naturally, people are interested in the occult. They want to know if indeed there is a spiritual world, a refuge from this reality. Furthermore, death has become a very real thing in our lives, uh, since the world itself where we live in is dying. So people are curious to know what's beyond, and perhaps that leads them to try to communicate with dead relatives, trying to seek answers. Or maybe most people are interested in the occult because for generations it has been forbidden and the forbidden fruit is the most wanted and curiosity leads people to seek out what will satiate their hunger for knowledge. But is the occult really harmful? Must we indeed be preoccupied with this increasing interest in magic and witchcraft? Are our children taking a path towards their destruction by experiencing these things? Let's try to understand. The Bible is quite clear on how to deal with occultism and gives extensive warnings about it. 
I'll put in here uh, one example. Like it or not, we have had thousands of generations reading the Bible as the main source of religious knowledge. Thousands of generations with an absolute fear of witchcraft, sorcery, vampires, werewolves, monsters and whatnot, everything from the realm of occultism. Worshipping fire is forbidden, so is casting spells, interpretation of omens, divination, etc. The Bible is quite clear that nothing of that sort should be done, and apparently, according to the Bible, those who have contact with the occult support the demons. The Bible teaches that some angels that rebelled against the God became his enemies. These evil angels became demons, and any spiritists, mediums, seers, sorcerers, any act of divination and astrology, it's a practice that leads people to become friends with the enemies of God. The Bible is very clear that occultism is a bunch of lies, and any person interested in that becomes an enemy of God. But it's important to understand that everything that goes against the will of God is considered an act of rebellion. Angels that do not agree with God are banished into the darkness and put in chains. Everyone, everywhere, must do as God says and as God wants or they will suffer terrible consequences. For a God that professes to love his creations, a benevolent God, a good God, well, there are some clear contradictions. God only approves of those who do as he says. So there is no real freedom. You either live according to the cosmic law of a tyrant, or if for some reason you want to live on your own, have your own ideas and experience the world around you, you are in terrible danger if God finds out that you are not living according to his will. This is exactly why the three major monotheisms fear so much occultism. The moment people start to educate themselves by other means, outside the official religion, outside the control of the religious authority, people become a problem. Educated people raise questions. Questions lead to answers outside the stipulated religious order. Educated people are very hard to control. And that's the exact problem. These monotheisms want fearful followers that are too afraid to raise a hand and ask a question. Occultism is forbidden by such religions, not because it's evil and it's an association with demons and automatically leads to lose our souls, Occultism is forbidden because it's a wondrous variety of sources that lead to knowledge, and knowledge leads to greater wisdom. A wise person doesn't need to bow before a god, and if the wise won't fear the wrath of a god, they won't certainly fear mortals. Ignorance is the best weapon a religion has to control the masses. So, is occultism really harmful? It is to religious authorities, because it brings knowledge, and educated people throw down empires and create realities of real freedom and cease to follow the illusion of salvation. Salvation and illumination isn't in the hands of some religion or some god, it is inside all of us. We don't really need salvation. All we need is the freedom to enjoy life and to learn how to enjoy life. For I believe our true purpose in this world is to obtain as much knowledge as we can, to achieve greater wisdom. And so we become our own personal gods and goddesses, enlightened by the illumination achieved through our own actions. The occult is to experience, 
it is to try and fail until we succeed and so we learn and so we become wise. And by acknowledging our own ability to learn outside the religious laws is the first step to refine our own existence. So, when it comes to the occult, in the end, you only have to ask yourself if you believe in such things. If you are a skeptical, then there is nothing to be afraid of, there is nothing to lose. If you are a believer, then there is much knowledge to be had, and with knowledge you diminish the probability of failure, therefore you have much to gain. Should you embrace witchcraft, sorcery, the black arts? Certainly. Life is about having the courage to take one step forward into the unknown and risk everything. After all, we all gamble with our very lives every day. All right, my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, Tafuridon.